Hello and welcome to Captain Bob. Today we're going to take a Fusion 360 file for a Cessna 172 project, do a bunch of cam magic, and turn it into a file that we can open with a post processor such as Mach 4. I know whenever I'm in Fusion 360 that gives your brain signals to kind of tune out uh, according to the magical YouTube graphs, but this is going to be pretty cool. Usually you just use the design part of Fusion 360 right here. But today we're going to use the manufacture part. The design part is where you like extrude things and do fun stuff like that. But the manufacturer part of Fusion 360 is where all the fancy CNC magic happens. So right here I have all of the instrument panel panels. Let's go with this part really quickly and see how it was done. So this part right here is the six pack section. I just basically made a new setup by clicking this setup button and here it, here's the setup and then after that you need a bunch of operations so what i did was i started by making some small holes and for some reason contour worked just to get all of these little holes not really sure why that worked out but if i used the contour um it worked out i'm actually going to show you my process using this panel right here it's the left panel uh let's go over it here's the setup right here go through here it already selected i'm using a three axis machine or here boom boom um i'm going to be milling da, da, da. now we set our origin so the origin can be the stock origin um which i'll define later the orientation it's a little weird the z is up um, the X is the, how it should be, but the Y is down. So we have to redefine that. Go to model orientation, and I like select X and Y axes. So I like to go select X right here, select Y over here, and then that reorients it. We need to flip Y because Y positive is down. We also need to flip X. Here we go. So this is how it would be with the CNC mill. If you think back to 3D printing, Z is always up, X is always to the left, and Y is always um, up in the, this direction. We need to define our model, and our model is just this body. This is the whole CNC operation. There's no fixture. I'm not clamping it down with anything fancy. Uh, so we're actually going to press OK right now. I like to press OK after this first page because it makes it actual. If you make a new setup, and then accidentally press cancel, it deletes that setup and all the information you put into it. So press OK. Um, it's, it's a fun time. Double click this icon right here to edit it and go to stock now. I like to say relative size box. And that just makes the stock like this. And you can add some offsets right here. And I like to have the stock side offset. Um, set to a little bit more than I actually need so you'll see this is the leftmost place and I like to have it about five millimeters ish uh, give or take but this basically gives a little bit of margin and uh, it kind of works out I like to have a, my bit width plus a little bit so in this case it's my bit would be three millimeters plus two millimeters of gap over here stock top offset don't need anything there stock bottom offset right here i would need stock bottom offset right here i would do basically the same thing and have a five millimeter offset on the bottom you can also round up to the nearest millimeter that just helps everything look all nice when you cut out your material top offset you'll see right here we don't want a top offset we don't want to have to rough out the panel so you set the top offset to zero and that just sets it at wherever it needs to be so yeah here you'll see if we round down there's no top offset so that's good it looks pretty fun now where do we put our origin you might ask let's put it right here so back in the first tab because we set up our stock um, you can put it at this place right here. This is my preferred origin, left bottom. Um, you might even consider doing something like, uh, I don't know, top right. And you'll 
you'll be able to pick it up easier, but left bottom is my preferred one for some reason. I guess it carries over from 3D printing. So that looks all good. Stock looks all good. You can even use these dimensions right here to cut out your stock. I would actually leave it as one entire piece. So basically you won't waste this little bit of material and this little bit. So you'll save a little bit when you're not just cutting out squares. Um, but I digress. If you need to, you can cut out things to this dimension and it works out pretty nicely. Post process right here. You can assign this setup a certain number. Uh, you can also assign that later. You can assign a comment like, there we go. Um, that works out. I don't know what this means, but I'm, a, I'm pretty sure it's pretty cool. That's all for our setup. Let's rename it left panel. I'm sorry if I misspelled gray for the Europe people. Um, just ignore it, kind of. Now, we can pick a few of these operations. I like to start up with the contour, and this kind of basically gets all the little holes for some reason. I don't know why it works, but I guess it does. It's probably not the recommended way, but it works for me. So I just click one of these holes. You also uh, want to select your tool. It's already selected for me, 1 8 inch flat end mill. And then here's where you would set your speeds and feeds for your specific operation. There's not really one for wood over here, per se. I'm not really sure w what one would work well. Just kind of fill in your speeds and feeds. I'm going to just use like plastic roughing. That's not recommended. Uh, do your own research to find your feeds and speeds. This is just for demonstration. So machining boundary silhouette I don't know what that means so the geometry I don't know what that's all about if we click visible we can see what we're doing better cool containment machining boundary that's good we can go over to height and double check our heights our bottom height is from the model bottom zero uh, so it's basically touching the model bottom and the top height is from the stock top and its offset is zero millimeters now our retract height Clearance height is the first height the tool rapids over to when it starts, and then the retract height is how much it comes out of a hole and then goes to the next hole. Okay, so that makes sense. So our heights are all good. Passes. Tolerance. Not sure what that's about. That's kind of fun. Multi-axis. Nope. Linking. Nope. So let's click OK and see what happens. I can't explain why it happens, but it does. Uh, all of the little holes but not the big holes for some reason, are shown with this little contour. And they basically, if we click simulate over, I don't know, here, you can see what happens. So it basically wiggles itself down into the hole and then goes into the next hole. This is one way to do it. Um, there are better ways. So that was the way using the contour. Let's hide this contour really quickly. And let's do another way, which is the drilling. You can also use the drill operation if you just want to drill the holes really quickly. We have this all good. We're going to pretend these feeds and speeds work. Click geometry and hole faces. So you could say faces. Oh, this is a hole right here. This is a hole. This is a hole. This is a hole. This is also a hole. These are all holes. Uh, you can do that. Or what I like to do instead is go to diameter range. So this lets us say any diameter that is more than one millimeter, or we could say three millimeters because it's our three millimeter tool. We'll just say one millimeter for now. I don't know why. But if you say uh, the maximum diameter of five millimeters, so anything smaller than five millimeters, but bigger than one millimeter, it detects those and just goes down real quick. So yeah, you can optimize the order and it'll just go down, down, down. This is all good. Again, heights, heights look good. You can also choose your cycle type. So if you're gonna do uh, like tapping or something weird like that, boring. Oh. I'm just doing drilling rapid out for now. So that is another way to do the holes. I of course only choose one of the ways because you know, that's kind of how it works. With this contour right here, uh, the one that goes all circular, blah, 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 blah. This can be drilled for basically any diameter, um, but this drill right here, you have to match the hole size to your bit. Um, 
size. So basically your hole has to be the size of a bit. And now we just do a bunch of 2D contours. What I like to do is I like to select all of the bottoms over here. Boom, 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 boom. You'll also have to go over here. You could do these with a drill um, if you felt confident with that. Um, but I don't know. That looks all good. We will notice uh, it looks like this hole didn't get done for some reason. I think it was just the radius. It looks like we selected them all. Let's go through everything real quick again. Um, so you would use your speeds and feeds. These are just, I might even blur these out. These are just for um, exclamation sake. Let's go over here. Can you also do pocket recognition? I'm not familiar with that, so I'm not going to dabble into this water right now. That looks good. Heights, uh, they look good. Passes. Uh, it's probably good linking I don't know what that means good fantastic so now it also cuts out all of these fun holes so that looks exciting one thing over here uh, you will notice is under geometry you have tabs right here I think we got away with using these maybe but I would recommend using tabs um, maybe a little bit more distance. I think I used like 50 millimeters. So you just have three little tabs. Probably want them a little higher, maybe like one millimeter, just because they break off pretty easily with this material. Oh, for heaven's sakes. So you can adjust all the parameters here. And now that I use the word parameters, I sound super smart. And if I sound sick, that's because I am. Uh, I'm quarantining, so I might as well just make a video. 2D contour over here, and let's do the same thing. We'll select this body right here, and I'm not gonna use tabs for this actually, because this will be double-sided taped to the bottom, so I don't need tabs. Heights, well, they're good. This looks probably good. Linking, probably good. You can use tabs if you want, then you don't have to double-side tape it, um, so that's good. So now, if we click this right here, select the setup, we can click simulate and see everything that happens. It's kind of annoying to have to go through it in real time. So what I like to do is speed it up. This is what I call the YouTube playback. So you can see it's second operation over here. And it is pretty cool because they're all color coded to the operation type, I think. Something like that. But you can see the second operation is also just drilling them out if you remember these are drills these are contours so you will notice the drilling is a lot faster than the contour so you will keep that in mind you can also see the 2d contour right here just cutting out all these circles and then finally the outline blue 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 i like to do things from smallest to biggest um because if you have this small little booger over here uh then that's probably not going to mess up your operation as much as this big booger over here. I don't know why I'm calling them that. But basically, if you have a small hole and it um, and there's run out, I think. Yeah, if there's a little bit of a run out with that hole and it, I don't know, wiggles the workpiece. That won't wiggle the workpiece as much as this um, roughing operation over here. That just sounded, that was a buzzword. I don't even think I used it right. Basically, this big operation over here outlining the panel will move the workpiece a lot more than just these little drills. That's why I'm doing it little drill to bigger to biggest. So here's post-processing. How do you do that? Click this little post-process uh, and this will send it from a Fusion 360 magical thing to a G-code or a dot, I forgot, file. So click this little post-process button you can choose your post from the library. There might even be mock forward right from the library. Yeah, so uh, you can select it from the list here. Wow, that's really cool. So you can just select it and select. This is actually a new feature, I think, because you used to have to go to post library for Autodesk Fusion 360, and then you'd have to search up mock 4, mock 4 mil, and then download it and then upload it. But now you just select post, choose from library, and type it up over here. 
So Mach 4 mil. Wow, that is really cool. You can also select a local one if you need to. I don't know why you would. So now we can use our generic 3 axis machine with Mach 4. And you can name your program. This is basically the title of the program. I always like to name mine something exciting. Comment. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. And then here's where you output it. I always like to save it to a flash drive so you can, like, I don't know, do it to your flash drive or whatever. And C extension. Um, you can't choose it. Dot tap file, yeah. Open NC file in editor. That's pretty fun because then you can open it afterwards and see what it's all like. You can edit these to your heart's content and click post. It then opens in Visual Studio, and if you don't have it, it'll be all like, "Yo, download it, you goon head." Here's our G code. It's pretty cool quite a long document but this is basically what the cnc mail reads it's like it's bedtime story Forty-seven thousand lines of code but yeah this is basically it showing its x coordinates and figuring it all out which is pretty cool i would have thought that they would use something like this is a circle and it has this radius and here's its center but i guess this whole like move a thousandth of a millimeter to the left works too so i don't know so there you have it we just figured it out. This is with Mach 4. If you're using something else, um, proprietary software, then you would just adjust that to your post. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed learning about Fusion 360 Cam. And really make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell because you don't want to miss the next video where I actually mill the panels. Like, come on. These panels are part of the Cessna 172 project where I build a flight simulator as best I can and as realistic as possible. I'd love if you'd come along on the journey and maybe watch a few of the last videos. Have a fantabulous rest of your week. Have a great Cessna 172 Tuesday, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.